really matters? That might be the most important question you can ask. So let's talk about it. Welcome to What Really Matters podcast, Everyday Spirituality with Karen Wyatt. Today I'll be talking about how to have more empathy for others. But first I just have a couple of really quick announcements. I wanted to let you know that I also have another podcast called End of Life University. You'll find it on Apple Podcasts, Google, Spotify, Stitcher Radio, all the places where you listen to podcasts. And if you're interested in hearing interviews with people who work in all areas around the end of life, that's a great podcast for you to check out. I have lots and lots of conversations and discussions with people all about death and dying, afterlife issues, after death issues. And you may find it helpful if that's something you're interested in learning more about. So check out End of Life University podcast. I also wanted to mention that you can help support this podcast and End of Life University by going to my page on Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash E-O-L-U, and you'll find a place where you can make monthly or annual contributions of just a small amount to help keep these podcasts on the air. And I really appreciate the support of everyone who stepped up and joined my team at patreon.com slash EOLU. And finally, if you like listening to this content, be sure to subscribe on whatever platform you happen to listen on and also leave a rating and review for the podcast as it helps this podcast rise up in the rankings so that more people can find out about it who are looking for this kind of information. So let's move on and start talking about empathy. I decided to address this subject because I feel like it's something perhaps we all need a little refresher course on right now at this time in our history around the world and what we're going through. We've been through two years of a pandemic that has had lots and lots of ups and downs and frustrations, but lots of grief and lots of pain. We're also dealing with political unrest economic uncertainty, a great deal of polarization in our society. And I think many of us are just exhausted. We're tired of caring so much and tired of feeling everything that we have to go through, all of these emotions that are up and down and all over the place. So it's a good time to talk about how do we shore up our skills a little bit for empathy, because empathy is indeed a skill. It's part of our emotional intelligence, and we can learn better skills at empathy. And we can also reinforce our ability to have empathy. Certainly, some of us are probably born with more aptitude for empathy. It may come naturally to some of us. But for those of us who find it difficult to feel empathy for other people, we can get better at it. There are things we can do to help ourselves learn more empathy. And again, I think this is a time when many of us who are good at empathy in general, most of the time, are pretty much feeling wiped out and exhausted. And if you find yourself reacting negatively or cynically when you hear about someone else who's going through a difficult time, that's an indication that you could use a little bit more work on your empathy skills. So let's just talk about it a little bit. I wanted to define empathy first of all. And I like this definition that empathy is being able to see things from another person's perspective, being able to understand what that person is going through. And it might be pain and suffering and difficulties. It might also be joy, though, and happiness that they're experiencing. But being able to understand what that is like for that person even if you yourself have not had the same experience that they're having. So empathy requires us to be able to step into another person's shoes, to really be able to see the world through their eyes and to feel what they feel. 
We often distinguish empathy from compassion, so I want to talk about that a little bit. And I've even said it myself before, if we feel empathy but don't have compassion, we may get exhausted from our empathy because we're taking on the emotions of other people and we don't have anything positive to do with it as which compassion allows us to at least send people love and positive energy. But what I, the way I look at it, empathy is something that we're motivated to that inspires us to want to help other people and it inspires our creativity and our thinking to come up with ideas and solutions that may be of help to other people. I think empathy is the first step toward compassion. Once we feel empathy for another person, then our empathy, rather than speaking to our minds where we're inspired to come up with creative ideas, we feel it in our hearts and that's where we generate compassion for the other person. So our response to someone else's suffering that we are empathic for is to send them love and kindness and this healing energy from our hearts, if that makes any sense to you. So I think we need both. We need empathy and compassion. But if we don't have empathy, it will be hard for us to recognize when our compassion is needed. So I think we have to start with empathy. And how do we understand, appreciate, and even validate what other people are feeling, particularly when we don't agree with those people or when perhaps we don't really like the stance that that person has taken. We don't like the choices that they've made. How do we feel empathy in those situations? Before we talk a little bit about that, I want to just let you know that experiencing empathy genuine empathy, not just pretending like you care, but genuinely caring for others, has a lot of benefits for us. And so there are reasons why it's good for us to feel empathy. So in studies, they've generated that when we act with empathy, we have improved relationships with other people. I think that's obvious to us, of course. Of course, it would help our relationships if we have empathy for others. But that's a benefit to us. It gives us more connections with other people. It improves our social skills in general to have empathy so that when we're in any kind of a social setting or a group setting, we're more comfortable talking to other people and having conversations with them and we're less likely to retreat and withdraw and want to be alone. We're better at cooperation and collaboration. So empathy is extremely helpful in the workplace because we're able to get along with others to work together as a team and find solutions to problems. Empathy improves our own support systems. So that when we ourselves are going through a difficult time, we have more connections, deeper and stronger connections with other people who will show up for us and be there to help us out. It also improves our own resilience to stress so that when when we're under stress, we can withstand it better because we're so good at this empathic exchange back and forth with other people. We know how to recognize when they need help, and we also know how to send out signals when we need help that other people can read. And again, because we've improved our relationships and strengthened our connections with more people, we have a greater field of support around us that can help us when we are going through these difficult times. From a medical perspective, and this is something that interests me a great deal, they've done a number of studies that have shown when healthcare providers express genuine empathy for their patients and, and again, not just pretend like they care about them, but genuinely do care about their patients, patients have better outcomes. And so that's a very desirable quality and trait to have for any of us who work with patients 
or work with other people, but also it's something we need to have in our lives, no matter what our work is or what we do or how we show up in the world. To be capable of greater empathy benefits us, but also makes the world a better place and helps people around us. And I think that's something all of us would like to achieve, even though at times we may get exhausted and find it difficult to express our empathy. So I've been reading some studies that psychologists have been doing on empathy, and they've talked about a couple of different reactions to our own empathy. And it's important for us to know about this, I think, and be aware of it. The first is empathic distress. So this describes a situation where you feel empathy, you feel the feelings of another person, but it is unpleasant for you. It makes you feel distressed and it makes you want to move away from the other person to avoid them and withdraw rather than to reach out and help them. This can happen if we've had too much exposure to pain and suffering, which is probably true for all of us over the past two years with the COVID pandemic. Uh, We read constantly all day long in the news and other types of media about the suffering of other people right now. And it is exhausting and it's overwhelming at times. And so it makes sense that we may experience empathic distress when we see that someone else is suffering. We don't respond in a positive way and want to reach out and help. Instead, we feel burdened and uncomfortable with that distress and have a need to back away. And it may actually feel like it's just too costly for us to care. It will take too much away from us to give to that other person, even though we see that they're suffering and they have needs. It's easier to turn away and walk away than to risk that we are going to become further exhausted ourselves. So I think empathic distress comes about when we've just been asked to give a little bit too much and we've really worn ourselves down. It could also be that seeing a certain type of suffering that another person is going through triggers our own fear and dread within us, and that also can cause us to shut down and pull away. So it's important for us to know ourselves, to understand what our limits are, and where we need to have healthy boundaries around our empathy, and also to know what our triggers are. What are my own fears and biases, and where do I tend to shut down instead of opening up further? So the second response to empathy that psychologists have written about is empathic concern. This is the type of empathy we all would like to have, ideally. With empathic concern, we're motivated to try to help others. As I was saying, empathic concern activates us mentally in a way, our imagination and our creativity for problem solving, for solution finding. And so empathy helps us move toward helping the other person by helping us find ways that we could be helpful, things that we could do to intervene that might make a difference. However, this empathic concern can quickly lead us into overcaring fatigue and exhaustion if we don't have enough boundaries around it. So I think that's one of the essential things we all have to learn. And it may be that we've become exhausted over the last two years because we haven't had the right type of boundaries for our empathy. And I'm talking about boundaries that we may never have needed before. Boundaries on how often we look at the news, how often we scroll through social media, because perhaps that's where we become depleted in our ability to care because we're just inundated 
with so many images and stories of suffering that we can't deal with it anymore. So the situation we're in right now is really requiring us to put up some new boundaries in order to protect our empathic concern in order to keep it healthy and vital and to keep us from slipping into fatigue and exhaustion and over caring. So that's an important factor to think about. What kind of boundaries do you need to set for yourself in order to stay in a place of healthy empathy to make sure that you remain capable of that? So you're going to need to look at yourself. And as I said before, understand what your own limitations are. You might even be aware of a certain day when you just heard too much or saw too much, and you went into shutdown mode, you might have experienced that recently. And so those situations are good things to look at and try to understand what exactly was it that triggered that shutdown. And Is there a way that you can take a step back and protect yourself a little bit from just having to give too much empathy in too many different places? Maybe you need to prioritize who you experience empathy for because you may not be able to have empathy for everyone around the world who's suffering right now. So one of your boundaries might have to be that In general, yes, I care very much. I care deeply about these things that are happening in this group of people. But right now, I don't have enough to be able to actively engage and care about them. Until I can replenish my own supply and my own stores, then maybe I'll have more empathy available that I can give to others. So, I believe that we need these empathy skills in order to recognize the suffering of other people, but to not take it on emotionally. We have to be able to interpret their suffering and draw from that experience in order to decide how we might be of service in that moment. So again, the first step is being able to recognize when other people are suffering to be able to identify what their suffering is and to interpret it with our minds and interpret the situation in the best way that we could come forward and help out. So here are a few tips that I've gleaned from doing some reading and listening to a couple of lectures about empathy to improve your own empathy. Number one, have a mindset that favors healthy empathy. So in your own mind, think about having empathy for others and recognize that that is something positive and good that you would like to cultivate within yourself. Ask yourself, am I willing to help others? And to what extent am I willing to go in order to help them? Also, can I do that without harming myself? Do I have enough boundaries to protect myself when I need it? And do I recognize when I'm getting close to my limit and I need to put up more boundaries? So recognize that empathy is a good thing and we want to have empathy, but we want it to be as healthy as possible in how we offer it to other people. Secondly, tune in to the emotions of people who are suffering. And that is when we see the suffering, spend some time thinking about how they are suffering, in what ways they are suffering, and also naming their emotions. So it helps us if we can can identify the emotions other people feel and put a name to them such as She is feeling fear. He is feeling anger. They are feeling confusion right now. When we recognize those emotions and we name them 
in conjunction with the other person, that keeps us from identifying too much with those emotions within ourselves, because that's one thing that also burns us out. If we take on the emotion and we begin feeling fear and anger and confusion as if they belong to us, when those are not our emotions, those emotions belong to that person. And we are simply trying to understand the emotions. So identifying what those emotions are, giving them a name and recognizing that those emotions belong to that person. But I, I feel concerned that they're going through this difficult challenge and maybe there's a way I can help. So that identifying and naming helps us not just absorb and take on those emotions within ourselves. The third step is to listen deeply And so I think this is somewhat of a lost art in our society that uh, we haven't necessarily been trained how to listen to other people. We're often trained how to speak up and how to speak what we think and what we're feeling, but not as often are we are we trained to actually just sit and listen and be quiet and still and present and allow another person to tell us their story and express what they're going through to us. And simply listening to someone else is one of the best ways of growing your ability to have empathy because as you hear them tell their story, you will be recognizing and understanding their emotions in the context of what they have experienced. And you'll be expanding your own awareness of how another person feels when a certain thing happens to them, which might be different than how you would react or what you would feel. So simply listening is one of the best ways we have of expanding our ability to see things from another person's perspective, but also one of the best ways of showing empathy to them because everyone needs to be heard. And when we're willing to be still and be fully present with someone and listen to what they're saying, we are validating them. We're telling them that they matter and that their experience is real and important. And we're willing to walk this little journey with them as they tell their story and listen to them. So cultivate your skills of listening and practice that when you have opportunities. The fourth tip is to see yourself as a helpful person who can make a difference. And so I sometimes talk about seeing your best self imagining yourself if you were at your very best all the time, the best that you're capable of, your highest self. And when you're doing that exercise, it's good to include, I am a helpful person. I am of help and of service to other people. I am able to understand the suffering of others and to respond in appropriate ways to be helpful to others. So when you think about your best self, think of yourself as someone fully capable of being helpful to other people. The fifth tip is to experience the positive feelings that come from empathy. And we talked about those benefits of feeling more connected to others, improved relationships, of being better at cooperation and collaboration and building a stronger support system and being more resilient. Those are all the benefits. And begin to recognize within yourself when you've spent some time being empathic with another person, that it isn't just that positivity has come from you toward them, that you have received benefits from that interaction as well. So start looking for evidence of those benefits in your own life and becoming aware of how empathy helps you when you do express it and experience it. And the last tip, which has some sub tips contained in it, is to improve your ability to see through other people's eyes. To me, that is really the heart of what empathy is. It's the ability to take the position of another person and see how it is they look at the world and how they are experiencing what is happening for them in their lives. So that's what empathy is. And being able to have that 
perspective through someone else's eyes is one of the most important things toward stirring compassion in your heart for that person. So here's some ways you can improve your ability to see through another person's eyes. First of all, be curious and ask questions, even of strangers, people that you meet. Take an interest in other people and how they think and how they see things and what they've experienced. Have maybe a little list of simple questions that you ask people like, what was that like for you? Oh, wow. How did you manage that? What happened after that? And or even just asking them like, what did you like about living there? Or what's the best thing about doing the job that you do? Simple questions that you ask other people in social situations that can lead to them telling you little stories that help you see how they perceive the world around them. So be curious. Next, use your imagination to consider what life might be like for someone else. And this is a fun thing to do with total strangers if you're in a public place and you see someone walking by in the park or sitting on a bench or perhaps a server in a restaurant or a paper boy delivering newspapers just for a moment when you see that other person imagine in your mind what life might be like for that person and of course you're just making it up you're making up a story in your own mind for someone else but it helps you get used to seeing the diversity in people around us and so you become a better observer of other people you look at what they're wearing what they're carrying with them other people who are with them and stories may begin to come to your mind of who that person is and how life might look to that person in this moment maybe you see an elderly couple where one of them is pushing the other in a wheelchair and you begin to wonder about what has their journey together been like what have they been through and what is this like for them now at this moment in time? So use your imagination. Allow yourself to come up with potential stories for other people because it just expands your capacity to see differences and how life might be completely different for another person. Next is to expose yourself to people who think differently than you do. And it's a natural tendency for all of us to want to spend our time with like-minded people. I, oftentimes we seek that out. We're looking for places where we can find people who agree with us and who think like we do because it's so comfortable. But it is helpful at times if we can put ourselves in situations where we're around people who just see the world differently and think differently. It doesn't have to be people with whom we have um, very serious disagreements, but maybe people who, who belong to organizations, belong to churches that we know nothing about, and attending events or being in a social setting where there are likely to be a very diverse group of people attending is a way of just getting more familiar with those who are different than us and expanding our ability, as I said before, to take a different perspective on life. And I think the last step is to appreciate and be grateful for the diversity that exists on our planet in terms of human beings. Look around the world, how different are humans? On the one hand, how alike are we? Because yes, we all share certain very basic traits. We all grieve. We all face death and dying. We all love. But how differently does life manifest in the day-to-day -day activities of humans all around this planet? It's really fascinating. And when you can reach a place where you're actually really grateful for all the diversity and you enjoy it and you're fascinated by it, that's when you will have expanded your capacity for empathy so that you can be around anyone. And as they tell your story, you can find a connection with them. You can experience the emotion they might be feeling 
even though you yourself wouldn't wouldn't have the same emotion in that same circumstance you can understand it you can recognize where they're coming from and how they look out from inside themselves at the rest of the world so i think it's fascinating there's so many humans there's so many different ways to live and love and find meaning isn't it beautiful what an amazing tapestry is being woven here on this planet by all of these lives of different people. So I believe if you focus on trying to see that entire tapestry for how beautiful it is, you will find yourself expanding and your ability to have empathy from that place. When you can have empathy for others, you will just naturally move into compassion and allowing loving kindness to flow from you toward others. So I hope you find it helpful. I think that this is something we really need to develop and improve right now in our society and how we're looking at society. So I hope you can find ways to expand your empathy and fill yourself up a little bit so that you don't feel exhausted and then also Work on your boundaries so you can protect all of the sweetness and goodness inside of you and not become completely overwhelmed and fall into overcaring. So until we're together next week, remember that we're here for love. That's the most important thing we can spend our time doing, but we can't really give love very well until we find a way to have empathy for others. And be willing to face your fear, be ready for whatever life brings you next, and just love each and every moment of your precious life. Bye-bye.